Hi everyone, I'm Maylis Anderson. Can you imagine, my dear, that you are stabbed from the place you feel safe in? This is where our story begins, guys. And before I tell you how my stepsister destroyed my reputation and tried to ruin my life, please like and subscribe to my channel. Trust me, you'll want to hear this story of betrayal, lies, and sweet revenge. It all started six months ago. I was living my best life as a 22-year-old photographer with my own studio in downtown Springfield. My work was getting noticed, and I had just landed a contract shooting for local wedding venues. Life was good. I had my amazing boyfriend, Adam, who owns the trendy Art and Soul Gallery, and my dad, James, seemed happy with his new wife, Sophie. Honey, Vanessa's coming home next week, Sophie announced during Sunday dinner. She finally finished her studies in Paris. I tried to be excited about my new stepsister moving in. I really did. That's great. I can show her around town, introduce her to everyone. You're so sweet, Maylise, Sophie gushed. I just know you two will be best friends. When Vanessa arrived, she seemed perfect. All designer clothes and sophisticated manners. Oh my God, your photos are amazing, she'd say, hovering over my shoulder while I edited client photos. You're so talented. But something felt off like when my best friend Nina came over, and Vanessa's smile didn't quite reach her eyes. Did your stepsister really study photography in Paris? Nina asked me later. She didn't know what a prime lens was. Maybe they teach different terms in France? I defended her, but doubt crept in. Things got weirder when Dad brought up Paris at dinner. Vanessa would change the subject or suddenly need to check her phone. I brushed it off until Adam mentioned rumors circulating about me. Babe, Mrs. Thompson canceled her daughter's wedding shoot. Something about inappropriate behavior at parties? What? I barely go out except for client events. That's when I started noticing Vanessa whispering with locals at the coffee shop, her voice dropping when I walked in. My phone buzzed with a text from Nina. People are talking about you at the salon. Wild stories about you and some married guy? I rushed home that night planning to confront Vanessa. The house was quiet, except for clicks coming from my home office. I pushed open the door to find Vanessa hunched over my laptop, scrolling through my private photo folders. What are you doing? She jumped, slamming the laptop shut. Oh, I was just admiring your work. You left it open. No, I hadn't. I always password protect my computer. Malis, there you are. Dad called from downstairs. We need to talk about these rumors going around town. I looked at Vanessa's innocent expression and suddenly realized this was just the beginning of my nightmare. I was scrolling through my Instagram when my heart stopped. There was a photo of me, clearly edited, showing me dancing provocatively on a table at Rick's bar. I never even went to that place. The caption read, Local photographers' wild nights exposed. My phone started blowing up with notifications. More photos appeared. Me supposedly getting cozy with married men, drinking at sketchy clubs, even one that looked like I was exchanging something suspicious in a dark alley. All perfectly edited, all completely fake. Did you see what people are saying about you? Nina's voice shook over the phone. Someone sent screenshots to the Springfield Mom's Facebook group. Before I could respond, Another call came in, Mrs. Carter canceling her daughter's sweet 16 photo shoot, then the Wilsons canceling their anniversary session. My entire business was unraveling in real time. I tried calling Adam, but he was suddenly too busy at the gallery. When I finally cornered him after three days of dodging my calls, his face was stone cold. I got some interesting messages about you, he said, sliding his phone across the table. Anonymous texts with more doctored photos, alleged screenshots of me flirting with married clients, even fake text conversations about drug deals. Is this why you're always working late at your studio? Adam, those are fake. Someone's setting me up. I need time to think, he mumbled, walking away. At home, things were even worse. I overheard Vanessa talking to Dad in his study. I didn't want to say anything, Uncle James but I'm worried about my Elise. In Paris, we learn to spot signs of dangerous behavior. The late nights, the mysterious cash deposits, the married men, 
That's ridiculous, I burst in. You're lying. Malus. Dad's voice was heavy with disappointment. Multiple people have come forward. Even Sophie's church friends are talking. Maybe if you settle down, Sophie suggested with fake concern. Thomas Andrews is single now. A quick marriage could quiet these rumors. I'm not marrying anyone. This is insane. I stormed upstairs, my mind racing. Something about Vanessa's Paris story still bothered me. I opened my laptop and typed, Paris Photography Institute alumni. No Vanessa. Paris Art School's graduates. Nothing. On a hunch, I searched her name with Paris on Facebook. A post from eight months ago popped up. Missing my girl, come back to Chicago. The photo showed Vanessa with an older man wearing a wedding ring. Comments below, girl, his wife's gonna kill you. And another married sugar daddy? The truth hit me like a truck. Vanessa never studied abroad. She was hiding from a scandal with a married man. Now she was trying to destroy my reputation before I could expose hers. My phone buzzed with another canceled booking. I watched my stepsister walk past my room, smirking as she texted someone. The perfect little princess act was a lie, and now my entire life was falling apart because of her games. But this war was far from over. If Vanessa wanted to play dirty, she had no idea what I was capable of. We need to find what she did in Chicago, I told Nina as we huddled in my studio after hours. My business was hanging by a thread, but uncovering Vanessa's past became my obsession. Look at this, Nina pointed to her laptop. A deleted Instagram account under Vanessa Lux Life showed hundreds of posts from Chicago, not Paris. We found them through web archives. Wait, isn't this her with Richard Coleman? The real estate mogul who suddenly divorced his wife last year? Pictures showed Vanessa draped over a silver-haired man in expensive restaurants, on yachts, holding shopping bags from luxury stores, all time-stamped during her supposed Paris studies. Girl, that's not all. Nina pulled up a Facebook message from Coleman's ex-wife. She says Vanessa threatened to expose their affair unless Richard paid her monthly gifts. When he finally refused, she sent everything to his wife anyway. My phone dinged. A message from Sarah Miller, Vanessa's former classmate. OMG, finally someone's exposing her. She did the same thing to my sister Emily. Spread rumors that Emily was sleeping with our high school principal. Emily had to transfer schools. We found out later Vanessa was jealous because Emily got the lead in the school play. More messages flooded in as we dug deeper. Three other women came forward with similar stories, Vanessa befriending them, then systematically destroying their reputations when she felt threatened or envious. Holy shit, look at this. Nina pulled up a forum post from a photography group. A Chicago photographer warned others about a scam artist who stole client photos, edited them to look scandalous, then blackmailed people. The post was deleted, but the screenshots remained. We drove to Main Street Cards and Gifts where Mary, the owner's daughter, pulled security footage from last week. There was Vanessa, leaning over the counter, showing something on her phone to a group of gossiping women, all prominent clients who had canceled their sessions with me. She comes in every morning, Mary whispered. Always has some new proof of your wild lifestyle. Dad believes her because she acts so concerned, like she's trying to protect people from you. The evidence was mounting, but we needed something concrete. That's when Nina gasped, pointing at a tiny detail in one of Vanessa's Chicago photos. In the background, barely visible, was a sign for Pete's photo editing we make your dreams reality. Call them, Nina urged. Maybe they still have records of her orders. The owner remembered Vanessa well. Yeah, she wanted some pretty sketchy edits. Kept saying it was for an art project about social media manipulation. I kept the originals and her payment info because something felt off. My hands shook as I downloaded the files he sent. There it was. Proof of every fake photo, every edited screenshot, every manipulated evidence of my supposed double life. Plus, a paper trail leading straight to Vanessa. Send it all to my email, I told Nina, a plan forming in my mind. Tomorrow we're going to give this town the biggest scandal they've ever seen. Little did Vanessa know. Her perfectly crafted house of lies was about to come crashing down, and I would make sure everyone had front row seats to the show. 
I hit post on the video compilation and watched it spread like wildfire through our town's social media. Every lie Vanessa told, every edited photo, every fake story, all exposed in a perfectly crafted 10-minute montage. The evidence from Pete's photo editing was particularly damning, showing before and after shots of her manipulation. Within hours, my phone exploded with messages. Mrs. Carter called first. Malis, I am so sorry. Vanessa tried to blackmail us too, said she had photos of my husband at your studio. We should have known better. Adam burst into my studio, face pale. I found these on Vanessa's cloud storage. She accessed my phone that day at your house. She's been photoshopping and creating fake messages for months. Save your apologies. You believed the worst about me without even asking. Meanwhile, at home, chaos erupted. Sophie was screaming, waving credit card statements. You spent $5,000 at Pete's photo editing? In Chicago? You said you were in Paris? Dad's voice boomed from his study. Vanessa, step away from that laptop. What are you deleting? Nothing. I'm just... Don't lie to me. I can see the recycle bin open. The final nail in the coffin came from Richard Coleman's ex-wife. She went public with Vanessa's extortion scheme, complete with bank records showing monthly payments of $10,000 labeled as consulting fees. That manipulative little snake cost us everything, Mrs. Coleman told the local news. She's been doing this for years finding successful people to destroy for money, or just pure jealousy. Within days, Vanessa's carefully constructed world imploded. Her social media disappeared. Local shops put up no entry signs with her photo. Her attempts to get jobs in neighboring towns failed as the story spread. Adam kept calling, sending flowers, begging for another chance. I was an idiot. Please, let me make it up to you. No thanks. My reputation isn't the only thing that needed cleaning up. Last I heard, Vanessa was spotted boarding a bus out of town, alone with a single suitcase. Dad stopped by my new expanded studio last week. I should have trusted you, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. I know, Dad. Just remember, sometimes the perfect picture hides the ugliest truth. The bell chimed as a new client entered. Time to focus on what really matters. My art, my success, and my hard-won freedom from toxic people who tried to dim my light. Sometimes the best revenge isn't just exposing the truth. It's thriving despite everything they tried to do to stop you. What would you do if someone destroyed your reputation with fake evidence? Would you expose them immediately? Or would you gather evidence first like I did? Sometimes rushing to defend yourself can make you look guilty, but waiting lets them cause more damage. I faced this painful choice when Vanessa was spreading those lies. Looking back, do you think I waited too long before fighting back? Or was patience the right strategy? If you enjoyed my story of justice and revenge, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll be sharing more true stories about dealing with toxic people and coming out stronger. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.